Hello, my internet chums, and today we have some Bear Dynamic DT 880s, which we're going to convert to have a detachable cable. The theory is pretty much the same as the DT 770 and 990. There are some slight differences with this, and also quite interesting design. So we'll have a look at some of the differences between the 880 and the 770 and the 990 while we're in there. So. Without further ado, let us unbox these beauties. Oh, oh, excellent for video. You basically just got a blank shot now with me scrabbling to get a box open. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, come on. Uh, 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 uh. And time. What, what, what was that? Did you, did you time it? It, it wasn't quick. <laughs> right, let's get these open. Oh, we have buble wrap. Someone's given these some love. Oh, I'm glad I cleared my desk off so we don't scratch them up. Right, so these are the DT80 uh, DT880 editions. Uh, as you can see, they have a slightly different headband to the 770 and the 990. So you've got these little extra metal bits here, a different bit of padding that goes over there that zips up, They're like a ziplock kind of thing rather than poppers. Anodized aluminium yokes. They are actually built in the same kind of way underneath. It's got the same spring steel headband. The yokes are basically the same, just made out of a different material. You've got a light grey plastic as opposed to black, and a bit scratchy, feels like it's probably glass reinforced. Right. Um, but yeah, nice shiny metal, metal grill. And that is one of the things that's going to cause us some difficulties, probably, because uh, when we want to drill the hole, in here, we actually have to take a little tiny bit out of the metal there, uh, which means you need to be on your game when you're, when you're making it because you're drilling through diff different materials with different hardnesses at the same time. Right, so we'll start off in the standard way. We will remove the ear cups from the headband. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, on this one, I don't know if we have to remove both. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just remove one ear cup. Because I think, yeah, we're not replacing the headband cable on this pair. We're just just going to just make the cable detachable, and we're also going to add a little bit of mass to the back of the driver, so we do get to have a look inside, which is quite interesting. To see how they've tuned these, because essentially they've got the same driver, just with some different tuning. Uh, that, that yeah, it's the same as the 990, but tuned differently. Um, okay, so we'll remove the pads, finger, in yarn, and pull. There we go. Um, just going to pop that up. Okay, so now this is the first difference you can see. You've got some felt over the center of the driver. That will absorb some of the very high frequencies, possibly taking out that peak that the 990s have got. You can see that basically they built the 770s and the 990s first, and then went back and did some footling and some tuning and then came out with the 880s. So I would say a lot more love has gone into the design, or a lot more time has gone into the design. Possibly they did the 990s and the 770s and then thought, hey, we can, we can, we can make something even better. Uh, and these are more expensive, and I would say that that is fair because uh, they they are a bit. There's a, there's more parts to them. They're they're more fancy. Um, right. So the soldering iron is just heating up. Uh, while while that's heating up, we'll have a look inside. So in here you have like a cotton material. It's the same, it's very, I think it's the same as in the 990s, but you've got double the thickness in these, so you've got two layers of the same thing uh, to give a bit more damping inside the ear cup, which is nice. And this is the interesting part, so on the back of the driver here, on the 770, that centre bit will be covered uh, with some foam and a little hole, so the plastic part there that basically uh, channels the air. On the, on the 990s, this will be fully open, and on the 880s, which is the semi-open, you've got this screen over it of, a, of, of acoustic silk, and which is for more subtle tuning. Now that does come out. Let's see if I can just get that out. We'll have a look at it. So 
So we're going to have to get it out anyway for what we're doing. Yeah. So there's a little screen of acoustic silk there. And as you can see, you've got a plastic outer. And then that's stuck on top. So there will be multiple processes uh, to make that. That's heat sealed on there. So again, it's a, you know, some investment must have gone in to creating that part um, when they were tuning this. Uh, right, so we're going to unsolder the driver. If you're following along at home and you haven't watched any other videos on dismantling the 770s and 990s, uh, I would definitely take a photo of where all your wires go because uh, it makes it much easier when you're putting it back together. But we're going to go, right, so on here you've got a 0 and a 1 for the plus and the minus, and it's different on different ones, so yours might be different from these. We're going to start off with the negative wire, oh, sorry, the positive wire for the left. And then these two center ones are the positive for the right and the loop through for the headband cable. Then we've got the negative one, so you've got negative left, negative right, and negative for the headband cable, uh, for, the, um, for the main cable. So that's the driver detached. And so next what we're going to want to do is remove the original cable. So there's a little metal clip in there. Going to pull that out. And that releases the cable. This is one of the newer cables I can see. So you've got these yellow Kevlar fibers mixed in, which gives it a little bit more strength. And also my favorite thing about these is that the ground wire is thicker than the two positive wires because this has got to carry the negative from both wires. And most cables you see on headphones, all three are the same. So that's a, that's a nice, nice little bit of design, like a, you know, an engineer has got involved in that. I like it. Okie pokey. Right, so now we've got that ear cup removed and the driver removed. I'm going to just put the driver out of the way for now. Um, we will cut the end of this. And then there is no going back. We must succeed. Because, yeah, we're going to fit a, an XLR to that in a minute. Okay, right, I've got a Dremel here with a 10mm burr tool. I use a burr tool rather than the drill because it gives you a bit more control on this kind of thing. Like if you try and drill a hole in a hole, it goes all over the place. So what I'm going to use is the burr tool and I'm going to eat material out below. So the hole, the top of the hole is just above the line of there, which means that we can tap a thread in it. And again, and to do that, we need to take a tiny bit so I'll eat a little bit out of the metal at the bottom here, which is where it gets tricky. So if you are trying to do this yourself, just move that out of the way. Um, just keep a real eye on it. Go slow, because when you hit the metal, the Dremel's going to catch on it, and it's going to try and walk over that way, and you're going to end up with a lopsided hole. And ideally, you want it as central as possible. Now, and obviously, I've done this many hundreds of times, so I've got my technique down. But yeah, essentially I'm going to start off just by eating away a little bit of material there. And then once I can get the bit through, then it's time to tap, tap a thread in there. Right, okie pokey. Now then, inside here, the cotton stuff on the inside, because you've got double the thickness, it is going to get in the way when you tap a thread and your tap's going to catch on that. If you haven't got a thread tap the right size for your socket, as this is mostly plastic, you could actually just drive in the socket in there and the threads in the socket would tap, would kind of self tap into the plastic. But you know, as I've got the right tools here, I might as well use the right tools. But here's the thing, uh, let's see if I can get some tape. What, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bit of tape over the the foam there, which is going to stop it from getting caught up in the bit. All right, let's do that first. Oh, I've, uh, right, okay, so I've got the tape. But yeah, I've been listening to 
Jeff Wayne's War of the Worlds, and I've got that stuck in my head now. It's not bad, you know, it's, if you're going to have a tune stuck in your head, it's, it's pretty great. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay, so now we've got tape over that. So now I'm going to get my hold, my thread tap, which is the right thread pitch for for that socket I'm going to put in. Um, yeah. So rather than going in so that the socket is flush with this, it's probably better to go straight, you know, sort of nine, in line with the cup there because when you put it back together it's going to give you a bit more room otherwise the socket's going to poke up uh, it doesn't look quite as neat but from a reliability point of view I'd say that's a better better way of doing it right so tapping the thread now I know if, if you were tapping into metal you'd have to go back you know do one and then go back half a turn but because it's relatively soft plastic it's this is fine you don't have to clear the the swat and we're going to go through a, th a thin bit. There you go, you can see that coming through there. The tape's doing its job, we're not getting loads of cotton wrapped around the end of it, which is nice. I'm just going to take the handle off for the last bit. Might as well just go all the way through as we're nearly there now. There we go. So now that that's got a thread tapped in it, which means that when we put our socket in, it's going to essentially screw in and give it some support, and then we can give it a bit more support with some hot glue in the back there. Okay, so this is our headband cable. Just to be really confusing, in the Bear Dynamic factory, for the headband cable, they normally use the red for negative and the white for positive, which is deeply confusing uh, because they, they do it the other way around on the rest of the cables. I don't know whether it's a language thing, maybe in, if, in, if any of you speak German, let me know. Maybe maybe white, the word for white corresponds to the word for, re, for, for red, I don't, uh, for left, for right, oh, what am I on about? Yeah, where the white corresponds to right, they rhyme, but uh, I don't know. Right, so here we have our socket. I've got a Reen 4-pin Mini XLR, which I'm going to be fitting in there. And there are other, a couple of other companies who have started doing these as well, and they've copied our thing, so that's good. So that's kind of kind of a standard for these, which is good. Okay, I'm just going to remove a little bit of the silk. Uh, I'm using some of our lits here, you know, I'm sure if you were trying this at home you'd use normal wire, so soldering this is going to be a bit easier for you. But yeah, I need to remove a little bit of the, the silk, tin it, and then I'm going to attach the two left wires to this, so pin one and pin two, I'm going to attach wires two to go to the driver. Um, this bit's pretty lengthy and boring, so we'll probably just do a little speed up here or something. Turns out that's much harder when you're trying to get work your way around a camera. <laughs> right, but uh, yeah, so I've got two wires on there ready, and then what we're going to do is pop that in there, join on the other wires, clear some of the schmoo out, and then pop it all back together. We're going to also add a little bit of mass loading to the back of the driver if we can, so just adding a little bit more weight. So now we've got this. Uh, to screw this in, it's handy just to have a, a connector. So that's screwing in nice. Oh, it's beautiful. Beautifully cut thread there. Um, now then, I, I like to have the button at the front. So having the connector in there, you can kind of let it go all the way around. It won't. No, no. So that's going to be our, 
our best option, just there. And actually, before I glue it in place, I'll solder these wires on. So I'm just going to turn it round so that these are at a more convenient angle. Right. There we go, right, that's all soldered on there nicely, which is good. Now I'm gonna get this so it's straight, remove the tape, so use the tape to pick up some of the some of the swarf that's in there. Yeah, you can see how, how much fluff comes off this stuff if you're not careful. This is why drilling into it, so like that. Right, so we're going to just l leave that up, I'm going to pop, um, am I happy with that? I don't know. Can I go all the way around? Yeah, just get it extra tight just to have the least amount of slack in there possible. All right. Uh, all right, now what I'm doing is I'm just, I've got some very hot glue in the glue gun so that it flows really nicely. It's very liquid. I'm just going around the edge of this to stop it from coming unscrewed, but it'll also give it a bit. This is like the high, high strength stuff, so I'll give it a bit more support as well. Because these cables and stuff get yanked on, it just gives it a little bit of additional support. All right, so that's just going to let that cool a little bit. That's a relatively neat, neat job on there. Right, if we get our driver back, okay. So now what I'm going to do is I've got these little lead weights about the right size to go on there. I'm going to so just trim them down. So these are little lead weights, which I'm putting on the back of the driver, just to literally add a bit more mass, a little bit more weight to the driver. And uh, lead is obviously known for its weighty <laughs> weightiness. Uh, so yeah, it's sort of, called a sort of an ideal material for this because we can get, a, you know. A Good few extra grams in there without taking up loads of space. And what that does is it just the idea behind it 
is that it helps tighten up the base response. You know, we're not adding a huge amount of weight to these, so the difference is going to be pretty subtle. But when a driver's producing sound, you've got on the other side of here, you've got a diaphragm, which is moving in and out, creating the pressure waves. As that moves in and out, obviously there's an equal and opposite force pushing on the on the rest of it, on the driver. So making this heavier means there's more weight to push against. Um, yeah, it's one of those things that I don't know. It's, it's super. Like the, the difference is relatively subtle on these. On, on some headphones, we can, we we pack a bit more in, um, and you can really sort of hear the difference. The, these ones, yeah, you'll just get slightly better better bass clarity. So not more bass, but the bass itself will be a bit punchier, and you'll have a bit more detail in there. You can hear more of the texture in the very low notes, less boomy. All right, so there we go. we've got some piece of lead in there. I'm basically putting them in, making sure I don't cover these air holes, which, uh, which blah, 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 something to do with the driver. <laughs> yeah, some air comes out the back of here. Uh, so d by blocking those, you you change change the, the characteristics of the driver ever so slightly. All right, yeah. Okay, and I've got these thin strips of lead. I don't know whether this has any bearing on it or not, but lead is also slightly diamagnetic, which means that it produces an, an opposite magnetic force to, or a complementary magnetic force. Yeah, so magnets don't stick to it, but it does uh, interact with magnetic fields a little bit, so you might get some advantage of putting lead around it might increase the the magnetic flux in the center somewhere. Who knows? Who knows? All right. So there we go. So we've got lead all around the outside, lead across the back, and then this bit should snap back into place. Oh, it's like I've measured it beforehand or something. <laughs> there we go. All right. So that's that one. We're gonna now solder that back into place. In a second. Just wait for the soldering iron to heat up. So. Because I've got the headband directly soldered to the socket, I only need two wires going to the driver now, one for positive and one for negative. So soldering it back together is actually going to be a little bit easier after the mod than, uh, than doing it stock. So I'm just going to pop this one open just to do the same, just add a bit of mass to this one as well. Keeping an eye on the soldering iron. The temperature's going up. Um, so that's that off. soldering irons up to temperature. So I'm just looking at which pins I've soldered which to. So this is the positive. So I'm going to solder that to the pad with a 1 next to it. After these are back together, it's always worth running a, a phase test. So if you go onto YouTube and search for speaker phase test, you'll find something on there and that will help you make sure you've got both your drivers um, wired the same way around. See if you have one the opposite to the other, it sounds really weird and like everything's underwater. Alright. That's on there, good and proper. That's good. Alright, so I'm just gonna bend those wires out of the way so they don't interfere with the socket down there. And get the headband cable out of the way as well. And then, fingers crossed, this all goes back together nicely. That's good. 
All right, so we've got the driver in. There's a little key at the top here, so you've got to get make sure you get the driver the right way around so the key goes at the top. And again, you've got a key on the top of there, which goes in the same hole. And you pop that shut. There we go. So that's that one done. Just going to tweak the other one. So let's get our bits of lead. If you are handling lead, it's always worth obviously washing your hands afterwards. You probably don't want to ingest any. It is a heavy metal and therefore not good for you. I think this stuff's, you know, probably got some kind of coating on it, but but hey, better safe than sorry. Always worth washing your hands after touching lead. Right, that's that. Let me take the long bit. We don't yet sell this as a DIY kit, just because as you've seen there's a bit more to do on this. It's a little bit of um, shaping and, uh, and stuff. It's not, yeah, it's not ideal for all DIYers. We don't want people breaking their, breaking their stuff, so we don't, don't sell it as a DIY kit at the moment. We are working on something, but it's not quite there yet. Alright, so that's that plugged back in. Excellent. Put this back in its casing. Okay, when you're putting the pads on, I find it easier to hook one side on and then hold that with your fingers and then go around and lever it on. Now then when you come to do this, it will seem really hard. It's because I have done this probably, you know, 10,000 times. I've been doing mods on headphones for, for over a decade. <laughs> I've done this a lot. Uh, I've got magic fingers. I can get these pads on really easily. But I know, I know some people really struggle, so uh, yeah, don't don't worry if it takes a little bit longer than that. That's just that's normal. Okay, so now we have some DT eight eighties with a nice four pin mini XLR socket on one side. Going with a four pin, it's easier from a wiring point of view because you've got four wires, four pins, makes sense. Um, but it also allows you to go balanced because before these couldn't be used with a balance cable, but now because it's got a four pin. You can uh, upgrade those to balanced if you get a balanced amplifier, which is quite nice. We get a lot of people that come in, get them converted, just because they want to go balanced. Because it's not a cheap job, as you can imagine. You know, you got to, our workshop time costs us like thirty pounds an hour, so we have to charge more than that, plus parts. So yeah, so it's, you're normally looking about sort of fifty pounds to have something like this converted to a detachable cable, and um, you know, it's a lot of money. I think, but you know you can DIY it. You can do it yourself, but if you want someone to do it for you, it's going to cost you about fifty quid. 
to get it done nicely. Um, okay, so we've done that. Now we have to convert the cable. So, where's my cable? There it is. Okay, right, so. So now we have a cable with no end. <laughs> we need a four pin XLR on there. So I'm going to get one of these. These are our own brand of four pin mini XLRs because I'm fancy like that. We can get them made. <laughs> we can get them made to our own spec. But um, the Reen ones are, are pretty good. Um, the, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's worth having a hunt around. The, the Reen ones are very popular. R E A N. But they occasionally have an issue where they'll go into the socket and get latched and don't want to come out. That's why we got these made, because they're based on, on an older design, which does unhook better. So, so yeah, I don't know. It's difficult. It's difficult, because I don't think you can buy these yet. We've only just got enough for us. Um, but uh, but yeah, Reen ones are pretty good. The Furitec ones are obviously very good, but they cost more. You know, they're probably unnecessarily expensive for this kind of job. Uh, I'm not sure what other ones there are, but yeah, if you can look for one with the little round button, they're normally the <laughs> the better ones. Well, the the ones that are least likely to get hooked up in there. The ones with the rectangular button are the Reen style, and they. They seem to go wrong occasionally. I, I'm not. I'm not dissing them. Normally they're very good, and the rest of their connectors are amazing. It's just their mini XLRs occasionally gave us issues, especially if you've got a fat cable. If you've got a fat cable in there, they seem to not like it. I'm sure with a thin cable, they're they're much better. All right, so I'm just trimming off some of the Kevlar that's in there, so it doesn't get in the way. I'm gonna put the put the boot on the cable first because. The amount of times that I've soldered cables and forgot to put that bit on, and then afterwards you're like, ah, and you got to unsolder it and start again. So put that on. If there are any other bits that need to go on first, put those on. It varies from connector to connector. Uh, the Reen ones, you don't have to put other bits on first. It's just the boot. These ones, you can get these bits on afterwards, but it's easier to do it now. Uh, now the wire that's in there is a little bit fatter than the cable clamp. So I'm just going to open that up a little bit with some pliers and then we'll crimp it down again once it's on there. Come on, get on the, get on the wire, doing a video. All right, there we go. Right, that's on there, put this little Teflon cover on. I trim these back just a touch. Okay, so I'm going to strip these back. Ooh, heat up the soldering iron before I forget. And again, you don't want to strip off too much wire because otherwise you've got a chance of it shorting internally. And again, I'm going to, so I've got the three, three wires there inside the bare dynamic cable. And black is ground, red is right white is left in this particular instance as you saw in the headband cable they have a different arrangement of colors like I don't know why why do they do that <laughs> why do they do that uh, okay let's get a little bit of solder on there So anyway, this bit, you know, it's pretty straightforward. If you've made it this far, I'm sure you don't probably need to watch the rest of the video, but, uh, you know, let's just hang out, let's have a chat. How's it going? Stick a comment in the what's it if you made it this far. <laughs> uh, let's have it. Let's do this. All right, so again, it looks like these are possibly lit wires with a coating over the wire because it doesn't take the solder that nicely. So uh, I'd probably get a bead of solder on your soldering iron and just hold it up against the end until you see it kind of start bubbling and soaking in. And that's that's normally a sign that the, the coating is coming off the wire. 
Uh, we've got the soldering. We're, we're using silver solder, so you need a, quite a hot soldering iron for that. Um, and our soldering iron is set to about 450 degrees. But uh, with normal solder, you can get get away with lower temperatures. All right. So I've got that. And we've got the central barrel. Now then, obviously we've got three wires here. We've got four connections. The two centre ones, it turns out pins four and two are both the negative so we need to bridge these connections to one wire so the black wire has got to connect to both of those pins right okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bit of solder on the pins first then I'm going to put the black wire in between the two and then hopefully join the two connectors together with one piece of wire. It's one of those jobs where if you're trying to do this and not bridge it, oh, it'll bridge by itself. Uh, <laughs> but if you're trying to bridge the two pins, suddenly, suddenly they don't want to know. This is exactly what's happening here. <laughs> There we go. So now essentially I've got a bead of solder running between the two pins and the wire on there. So now we just have to do the others. Do the left one, which is going to pin one. Left plus to pin one. So you're just following the same layout that you've done in the socket. So if you've chosen a three pin socket, obviously your arrangement will be slightly different. Uh, or if you've chosen a different pin out to follow, as long as the socket and the and this bit and the cable have the same pin out, this can be fine. Right, there we go. so that's soldered on there. Oh, we're, we're close now. So now I'm just going to reassemble the mini XLR. Okay, so on these ones I have to push that up first. Then I have to push up the cable clamp. And what we're going to do is crimp that around. So you've got two sets of crimps on this one to hold it nice and tight. One small one, one big one. That helps us get around. When we've got four wires, we can do two around the little ones and two around the other ones. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. These 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 ones we had made for us, and they they solved a lot of the problems that we had with the Reen ones. But they've got their own their own issues. So we might we might get something else made eventually. But we've bought, you know, like a thousand of these, so we've got to use these up first. Right. So there you go. Kaching. Oh, oh, sir. Look at that. It's a beautiful thing. Oh, detachable. Oh, feel that engagement. Nice. Uh, and also, obviously, the the brushed nickel or whatever we've got on there. This is a pretty close match. I think it I think it looks quite nice. Um there we go. Alright. Happy days. If you've got any questions, stick them in the doodly do. Uh we're gonna stick these on our test rig and make sure that everything's legit and that everything's working right. But uh, I think that's that's basically it. Thank you, enjoy, try it yourself if you get stuck, message me. If you can't be bothered, message, message us. We might be able to book you in. We are quite busy at the moment, so we're trying not to book in too many mods. But uh, it's always worth messaging. We might have some space. All right, anyway, enjoy. All right, bye.